welcome back. Um, this is uh, Dan Walsh on Red Hat Dan on Tech. Today I'm joined by uh, Sergio Lopez Pasquale, one of the uh, best engineers at Red Hat. Uh, he is a senior principal uh, engineer, uh, currently working on the RIVOS effort, Red Hat and Vehicle Operating System. Uh, but over the years, uh, Sergio and I have worked together on a project called Live K-Run, and today we're going to be talking about that. Um, so Sergio, welcome. Uh, want to tell us a little bit about a Live K-Run? Sure, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so basically, uh, Live K-Round uh, was something we came when uh, around when we started thinking about uh, the uh, ways of uh, adding virtualization isolation to containers, basically to Podman and CRM. So, but that time there were already projects, I mean, uh, doing that, uh, like Rambi, which was kind of the Kata containers predecessor. But uh, those projects approach the problem by basically running a whole VM and then having an agent inside that VM uh, that will you communicate with and request it to run containers on your behalf. Uh, this is different from what we intended to do. What we wanted to do is to preserve as much as possible as the uh, uh, from the uh, regular container execution flow. Uh, I mean, we wanted to preserve Podman, we wanted to preserve the OCI run, the NC run. Uh, we wanted to preserve uh, C groups and namespaces and all that. And just at the very end, instead of launching the entry point of the of the container, we wanted the OCI runtime to be able to create a VM for us, a very small VM, and run the entry point of the container within that VM. Yeah. So, so basically, um, what the difference here is you're running a a container, KVM separated container, as opposed to a VM that's just running a container inside of it or what most people would think of as VM. Exactly, that was the idea. So the thing is that, that to achieve that, we needed uh, to have a very high level of integration with the OCA runtime. So what we come, uh, what the idea we had is uh, instead of trying to, instead of providing the virtual machine monitor, which is the user space uh, component of a hypervisor, instead of providing it as a binary that you will need to execute, uh, we uh, built it as a library. Uh, a dynamic library that the OCI runtime, uh, OCI runtime can load and can use itself to actually start the VM. Uh, so instead of having another component that you need to do it with, this is something that is becomes part of the OCI runtime itself and is the one that is going to be managing the VM for, for the container context. Uh, another aspect we need to cover is that uh, we needed, of course, uh, we needed this to start very fast because we don't want to have a worse UX, uh, user experience. So instead of uh, running a full conventional VM, we run some one that is smaller, that's a, a smaller set of devices, which is something that is nowadays called a micro VM. Okay, great. Um, and so this is just going to be an OCI runtime, just like C run or K run. It's just something that a tool like Podman or Kubernetes could just exact. Then. Exactly. It, 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 it has long. It, uh, it, there is a it's a container tool. Uh, your container tooling is using OCI runtimes. You can use Libke run. Awesome. Oh, do you have a little demonstration of this? Sure. So here I'm connected to a Linux machine, and as a regular Linux machine, I can simply run Podman the the usual way. I have container started, and this container, of course, will be running the same kernel. I have the same uh, update of the host. This is the way normal containers work, with nothing special. I cannot read the uh, the kernel messages because it's not really privileged in the host. Uh, and this this is the, the usual way you will run in Podman. But since this is Fedora and, and on this machine I have also installed the C run K run package, I can go ahead and add the dash dash runtime equals K run to the command line. And then even though this has started very fast still, this is actually running a different kernel than before. This is not the same kernel of the host. And in fact, the uptime is completely fresh. This is a newly uh, started VM. This is not a VM we had before and we just connected to it. It's a new one. And of course, in this case, it's, I'm really privileged. I'm really used on this uh, VM. Uh, I'm really root on this VM and I can actually read the kernel messages and grab. I confirm that in fact, I'm running under the KVM hypervisor. So yeah, this is the, uh, this is, the, the user experience is roughly the same, but in this case, we are getting additional virtualization isolation. And despite that, uh, many of the 
container semantics, or the, at least the most important ones are still preserved. So I can do something like this. Hello from VM. Test. And I'm going to share this volume with the VM. Let me container isolate the VM. Or see, I can access to it. And this is a newly freshly started VM. This is not the same one as before. It's completely new. Oh, and it runs, I mean, from a human point of view, just as fast as a normal container. It's pretty cool. It's very, it's very hard to appreciate the, the difference. And I can share volumes, but I can also, this semantics also apply to, uh, uh, to networking. So for instance, I can share the 8,000 port. I can set the work directory to be work. And I can start by some HTTP server here. Um, let's run it, the dash. Well, I'm missing, okay, work there. Okay, oh, the logs, see none of the DDE, yeah. And then I can connect to it. I have the, I connect to the, the process that is running within the container. So most of the container semantics are preserved, even though we are using the isolation virtual uh, the virtualization uh, the isolation of virtualization. Yeah. So so actually you're running, but you do you actually get both types of security, right? You're still running it as a container, so you're wrapping your um, wrapping the virtual process inside of a container, and then you're also using KVM separation. So you're really almost you know way more secure than just either virtualization or a container, and that you get. You know, both types of wrapping in top. And if I applied things like C groups and things like that, that would affect also affect this uh, lightweight virtualization or micro VM, um, correct? Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the main uh, main uh, goals of this project is that uh, we are not replacing with kind of a, one kind of isolation with the other. We are actually combining both. And all, all the uh, same uh, restrictions that are applied to a regular container are applied to the uh, um, to this kind of uh, virtualization isolation VM uh, with, the, with the additional isolation of virtualization itself. So in this model, not even the virtual machine monitor is trusted. So this user space component of the, uh, of the, hypervis of the hypervisor uh, is not trusted either. It's running inside the container itself. So even if the guests somehow manage to find out the escape from the, uh, from the VMM, from the virtualization isolation, it will still need to escape from the container isolation, and then you will need to escape from EC Linux. So it's lots, lots of layers of defense. Um, also, I know it should do everything in rootless mode. So yeah, not only that, but basically there's no set UID apps. There's no special uh, uh, controls here. Uh, finally, uh, um, since I know a lot about this, um, Live K Run is also being used for uh, confidential computing, which allows you to run workloads that even root on the system couldn't uh, look at. Um, so live K run is is going to be very you know, important to the, to the future. So um, I would encourage people to try out live K run and K run uh, you know, install C run K run um, and try it out. And if you want to run all your containers that way, you can actually configure containers.conf to just change the OCI default OCI runtime that you use. So you don't really have to do the runtime equals K run to to do that. Um, and then I guess finally you could actually run containers and K run containers. Um, in the same environment. So now I want to branch out. Um, another thing you've done with uh, Lab K Run is uh, something on the Mac. So you want to talk about that? Sure. So this guy, this is kind of interesting. It's a, it was kind of a happy coincidence. Basically, um, uh, last year we were looking for ways of running um, uh, GPU accelerated uh, workloads on, on Mac, uh, or most precisely on containers running on Mac. And since containers are Linux, uh, containers on a Mac means running containers on a VM uh, using Potent Machine, most, yes. uh, uh, most likely. So uh, the problem with that is that the um, uh, virtualization stack on Mac OS doesn't provide GPU accelerated devices uh, to uh, Linux guests. They do provide it for Mac OS, but the device is not uh, for Mac OS guests, but it's not available for Linux guests. And even if it were, uh, they, we don't have neither kernel nor user space drivers to actually manage that kind of device. Um, so it was interesting, but because precisely at that time, I, I was also experimenting with extending libk around to other use cases. I had just uh, added libk.io GPU support. 
So Virtual GPU is quite an interesting device because um, it virtual A provides you a virtualized GPU, uh, but it's able to do many things. So the first use case was simply uh, uh, do, being able to uh, pipeline OpenGL uh, commands from the guest to the host for running games or 3D app uh, applications in general. Uh, but these days it's able to do much more. And one of the things it's able to do is to um, transport Vulkan and serialize Vulkan from the guest directly to the host. From, so from the guest perspective, you are getting uh, a GPU, a Vulkan capable GPU inside the guest. Now we faced three challenges when thinking about taking this to Mac. Uh, but that time Libker Run already supported uh, running as a, a VMN, as a virtual machine monitor on, on Mac OS. Uh, but uh, we needed a way to, first we needed a way to um, uh, integrate this uh, with uh, the rest of the macOS stack. And the macOS stack doesn't support Vulkan. Uh, these days this, they're using Metal. So we need to somehow translate Vulkan to Metal. Uh, luckily there is this project which is called Molt MVK, which does exactly that for us. So we needed to integrate it into the stack. Uh, another challenge we, need to fa we face is that uh, on Linux, uh, the way in which you operate with device buffers is that you export them as file descriptors and then you pass in them to the guest. This is something that is not supported on macOS. So we needed to change the way in which memory regions work to be able to actually inject directly device memory regions into the guest. And finally, another challenge, which is more, um, uh, it's less technical, uh, but also it's also important. Uh, it is that the, we needed a way to integrate easily this in, into Podman and especially Podman Machine. And by that time, the uh, Podman team has just switched from BFKit, uh, so, sorry, from QEMU to BFKit. Uh, so we wanted to introduce something completely new and force them to rework everything from scratch. So basically, uh, the idea we came with uh, and Tyler finally implemented is uh, called KRUN Kit. KerranKit is basically provides the same semantics and the same command line as VFKit, but instead of using the, uh, uh, the virtualization framework of uh, macOS, it uses libkerran, uh, which brings some niceties. For instance, we get the virtual GPU support, but we also get in a, a better virtual IFS with uh, more wider uh, file system semantics, uh, which is also useful. So basically the, the thing is that um, we are replacing part of the virtualization stack on macOS, which is closed source, with an open source component that allows us to extend the, the devices. And that's what we did. Uh, we started playing with it, and we brought uh, GPU acceleration to containers on macOS. That's awesome. So uh, do you have a demonstration of this? All sure. Time? OK, so this is the same terminal as before, but this time I'm running on, on macOS directly. and. When I'm going to well, one one thing to one way to use Kero and Git is by calling it directly. So this is one. This is the way in which this is a small script I use to run all my uh, VMs on macOS these days. Uh, I'm basically starting GB proxy, and then I uh, just start Kero and Git with a series of uh, um, co command line options to uh, uh, provide the configuration I need. Uh, this is something that can be uh, used this way, and I get. I started the, I get the grab uh, uh, in the in the early in the boot process, and I got can get my Fedora VM started right away. Then I can connect to it, and I have my freshly started VM. That's one way of using Kerbal Kit. But the one that is probably most interesting for users is through Portland Machine. So. Science version 5.2, uh, KerranKit is integrated in Podman Machine. It's uh, a full-fledged uh, additional, um, uh, what's the terminology, uh, provider, virtualization provider on, Mac or on Podman. And in this case, as you can see, this uh, uh, this VM, uh, well, this Podman Machine has configured to uh, use libkerran as uh, the default uh, VM for Podman Machine. Uh, this is one that's already started, so I can connect to it. And within it, I can see some niceties that, niceties that I don't have with other providers. For instance, I have this, which is the GPU, uh, this the, the uh, DRI endpoint of the GPU. So if I take a look at the mask, I can see that I actually have some kind of GPU working on this VM. And since I have this GPU on the, on the VM that is powering my containers, then I can run something like this. 
of nine run slash and I'm going to share uh, the, uh, slash dev slash DRI. So I can have this, uh, my container can have access, access to the GPU too. And I'm going to, well, let's take a look here. I should have here. Okay. I have a Mistral model here. So let's do something manual. Device, DRI. Let's share this volume. Demo on work. And I'm going to run this Ramalama Ramalama compute variant. This is an upcoming variant of the Ramalama, uh, Ramalama uh, uh, container that brings with all the, the tools required to actually make use of the, the this Virtual GPU device. Okay, so let's see. I have this Mistral model here. So let's play with it a bit. Let's run JAMA apply with this model. Let's ask it about, tell me the, these are the reasons why you should not disable SAC Linux. Let's try this one. I'm, I'm going to bring the activity monitor to see where this is actually running. Okay, let's run it. Now I haven't told any uh, the Yama CPU to upload anything to the CPU uh, to the GPU, so everything is running directly on the CPU. And yeah. you can see it works, but you can see that yeah. uh, eight CPU or eight, eight of my uh, well, uh, I think that all my performance cores are working like crazy, and also two of my efficiency cores are also working quite hard. Uh, so it works. But it's not really convenient, especially if you are running multiple containers at the same time. So it has generated uh, 13 con tokens per second, which is decent, but it's quite inconvenient. So let's do the same thing, but this time let's pass NGL 99, which is we are telling Yama CPP to offload the workload to the uh, to the GPU. Now we can see that we have the compute bar site activated. Compute is one of the backends that uh, are able to use Vulkan. We can perceive that it's already going faster, and uh, we'll see later when how fast is it. But now, more importantly, we can see that my cores are way, way less stressed than before. But my GPU is actually doing some work, so we are bringing it into the into the mix. It's actually working quite hard, and we are getting twenty-two tokens per second. So we're getting more performance, but we are also freeing more resources to do all the things because. Usually you are not doing doing inference alone. You are usually running multiple containers with your workload or something probably connected uh, to provide a use experience to this inference. So this frees my uh, the, my the development platform to actually be able to do multiple workloads at the same time uh, without having to worry about uh, burning too much CPU or the workloads competing against each other. So this this basically allows me to uh, not only run. Uh, AI workloads natively on a Mac, but now I can run them natively inside of a Podman machine, uh, which means I'm running them in, inside of Linux because we've taken the GPU from the Mac, we put them into the, the, the LabK run based VM that's running on the system. Um, and that allows me to easily develop on a Mac, but still you know, work in Linux so I could easily put them into production. So if I wanted to move them into say, something like a Kubernetes cluster and OpenShift type environment or um, just use Podman on a Linux box, I, I could end up running the same containerized application, same code, and, and easily switch from one GPU, uh, the Mac GPU, to uh, say Linux GPUs. Um, so it's really uh, cool that we've enabled this technology. You can do it directly from Podman desktop. Weeks before we mentioned Brahma Lama, we'll be playing with that. Um, so allowing uh, developers on a, on a Mac to easily um, you know, work work on applications uh, with GPU, but inside of a, of a Linux environment. Um, so that's really cool. Um, it's amazing the um, stuff that Live K-Run um, has enabled, right? You know, so here we talked for the last 15 minutes or so uh, about all the different technologies that has. So it's absolutely brilliant, um, uh, really uh, great effort on your part. Um, and uh, thanks for bringing it. And thanks for having uh, joining us today and uh, giving us a great demo. Thank you for, for having me. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure.